Hello everyone, welcome to another video on my channel. In this one, I wanted to talk about a couple pitfalls in using Cass Effect, specifically the ones related to uh, stuff like stack overflows and out of memory errors. So uh, I suggest that we just get to it. Uh, so the first problem that I would like to mention is something that I was actually asked about. Uh, well, that was actually not a question for me directly, but it was a discussion uh, on our work Slack a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so a colleague was asking whether a snippet like this uh, is safe to use and whether it's going to uh, run into any memory issues or any uh, any other potential issues uh, due to how it's structured. Uh, so the short art answer is it depends. Uh, as always, the longer answer is that it really depends on a lot of stuff. So uh, first of all, this is going to be fine for Cas Effect if you have a specific compiler plugin. But if you don't, if you just have code like this in a plain uh, SBT project uh, without uh, the Mon better monadic 4 plugin, it's just going to uh, eventually, like with enough repeats of this code, uh, it's going to run out of memory. So let's just work through what's happening here uh, in the first place. We want we have a function that takes an IO and returns an IO of unit and it runs this IO uh, forever. In fact, this could be IO of nothing, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just more difficult um, to implement with a for comprehension. Actually, I don't think it's possible at all because we need to return something here. Uh, I guess there is a way we could get like this. Yeah, I guess that's that's a way. But then we get that code uh, warnings, which are not um, not very useful. So, so IO of unit is, is fine in this situation. We can write this method in a different way, which will allow us to use that type uh, to signify that this is never supposed to complete uh, successfully. It will either fail or just keep running forever. Um, uh, we can do that, but not with a for comprehension, not this way. And the problem with this is exactly the fact that we are using a for comprehension. Uh, we, we sequence on one IO, on the one that we get as a parameter, and then we sequence on the recursive call to the same function with the same parameter. So effectively, we should just repeat this IO uh, forever, as the name suggests. Uh, so the problem with this is that it's going to, uh, with, if the IO is fast enough and we let this, like this, this instance is fast enough, and we let this run for an indefinite amount of time, it is going to and, and on a finite machine, uh, a finite memory machine, which all them are, it is going to run out of memory. So uh, how, how and why does it happen? Uh, turns out that whatever you believe, this for comprehension without a specific plugin is going to do sugar into something roughly like IOA, flat map, um, repeat forever, IOA. You would think this is the end, this is it, it's not. Uh, you are actually going to get something more like this uh, because of how this is um, implemented, how the for comprehension is desugared. And I can preview this with uh, a library that I created some time ago. Uh, it, the only thing it does, it like, desugars some code uh, on a specific compiler phase. Uh, so we can actually see this map right here. Uh, the problem is that this is not super accurate. This is accurate right now because I don't have the, the better monadic 4 plugin. It wouldn't be accurate if I did uh, because it would still show the same code, the same kind of desugared code, even though it would be uh, optimized later by the plugin. Well, optimized. Fixed, <laughs> actually. Uh, so we can see that there is a map in there. And uh, because of this, uh, the underlying representation of this I.O. is going to look uh, a bit like uh, flat map IOA. Then we're going to have a function like this. It's going to be like map IO, uh, repeat forever IOA and then something like this. Uh, so we're going to have a flat map. This corresponds to the flat map in here. Uh, this is like a data structure in, in the IO implementation that's somewhere. Um, yeah, something like this. Um, yeah, there's more information for tracing here, but uh, I'm just ignoring that. Then we have map. So we would have this flat map on the, on the top level and uh, on this IO. And there will be uh, a function to uh, mapping on this recursive call. So this would be again like a flat map and so on. 
And the problem is that when we are evaluating this IO, we would uh, first evaluate this, uh, then run this function and ev start evaluating all of this. So we would need to first evaluate all of this and then we would be nesting ourselves, but we would still have this remainder at the end to run. So ideally, this, this is kind of useless, right? Because we know that this returns unit, this has to be, this is kind of useless because this argument is also the value unit and there's only one value of this type. So ideally we would get the same thing, but without this map outside, like something like this, and that would be the perfect uh, solution. So I can actually prove to you that there's a map in there uh, with, okay, that was too fast, with uh, uh, the decompiled code view in metals, or you can just run Java P on the class files yourselves. There is a map in there. There's a flat map first, and then eventually we, we have a map as well. Uh, so if this code was doing what we wanted to do, it, this would not be there. Uh, so uh, yeah, so we can add the better melodic four plugin to our build. I'm going to, to just add it right now and uh, skip fast forward to uh, the time when it's imported. Apparently that worked. Uh, so let's do, well, let's look at Java P again. And we are not going to find map in here. There's no call to map, there's just flat map and that's it. So thanks to this extension, this plugin, which is uh, for, so far only available for Scala 2, uh, there's no replacement in Scala 3, sorry. Uh, thanks to this plugin, uh, we can safely recurse like this. But if you are not uh, fortunate enough to have this plugin or you just uh, have a different code structure and you still need to avoid out of memory yourself, uh, then I have better ideas for you. So uh, the first solution that we can do, like, let's just move these out of the screen for now, is uh, by removing the for comprehension and just doing a flat map ourselves. So essentially this is what I showed in um, in these, uh, these pieces here. Like we would do this, but without the map. So that's uh, what we have in in here and that's that's basically it just flat map yourself and forget the map and this is going to work and also this is going to be uh, easier to do if you want to use nothing as a return type so that's possible now uh, the alternative is to use the uh, the right shark operator uh, I'm going to show you why just using the right shark operator is not enough in a second but uh, we can use that and we can delay the argument of, of this uh, which is a normal value parameter, we can su sort of suspend it into IO again, so uh, using IO defer. So this is a function that takes a by name argument of IO A and returns an IO of A. Uh, so this will allow us to, to, to do that. And this should be safe for memory um, as far as I know it is. <laughs> And finally, there's the other operator, which I don't really have a good name for. I guess you could call it and then, um, followed by whatever. So this is exactly like the right shark, except it's not. The argument is a by name parameter, and that's pretty much the only difference. The implementation is very, uh, very should be very familiar to you by now. It's exactly just flat map that ignores the argument, uh, like the result of the first I/O. So this is virtually identical to, to this. And so we can we can use this to implement the same stuff. And uh, as I mentioned before, we can use this uh, compiler plugin to solve the same problem and not have to worry about uh, not using f uh, for comprehensions. Although just, just uh, be advised that if you do any kind of IO here, uh, you are going to be out of luck because whatever you do here, this is actually never going to run, but it's going to sit in your memory for all time and it's going to stack up because you'll get one of these uh, for every repetition of your IO. So I suggest that you don't do this. And now the second pitfall that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is going to not relate to running out of memory really, although kind of it is, uh, it's going to be about stack overflows and stack overflow error is something that you get when you uh, just run out of stack space. So it's kind of, it is actually memory related, but we don't think of it uh, this way. We usually think about this in like terms of too many recursive, usually recursive, but too many calls to functions nested in each other. 
So the problem with the right shark, shark operator, which I mentioned before, that it, it was going to be problematic, is that the argument is not a by name parameter. It's just an eagerly evaluated parameter. So the problem with the implementation of repeat this way is that it's not actually going to, like when you call it a function like this, like when we go back to out of memory here, when we call this function, we are actually going to get an expression of type IO of unit. But when we call this, we are never going to actually see an, exception, an expression of this type. The result of this method will, it will actually never return because it will sooner run out of stack space. So what it's going to do, it's going to, like when we run, call this method, it's going to evaluate what this argument is. So we, it already knows what it is. Um, to recognize like type checked after, well, the type checking is com the compilation phase, but uh, it's going to like look up the shape of this method and what arguments it needs. Um, and then it's going to try to understand what this argument is. So it's going to run this function right now and do the same thing all over again. And it's going to do so repeatedly because we just don't have an exit condition. So this would be fine if this was happening after this IO runs, if we, you know, this first instance of this IOA uh, has completed, then we want to repeat to the other and the next and so on. But we haven't even started running this IO. We are barely evaluating how the, the data type of the IO is going to look like. And it's going to be a very, very long uh, sequence of basically, and then IOA repeat forever. Uh, IOA. Um, actually, this is going to be more like and then IOA and so on. It's going to be just expanded like this without end. And we are never going to actually reach a moment when this ends and we have a data structure for the IO and we can run this. And that's just because this is not cap capable of any kind of laziness. So, yeah, I guess I wasn't really uh, that right on the exact representation, um, but we are never going to see any kind of data structure in here simply because this argument of the function is not going to be fully evaluated as an expression and not as an IO, but evaluated as an expression. Uh, it's not never going to be fully um, expanded. Um, we'll just have dozens and dozens, thousands possibly, of calls to this repeat forever function on our stack and eventually we will run out of stack space. Uh, whatever your setting is, uh, you probably don't have enough memory to have infinite uh, function calls on a, on a stack. So yeah, so the solution to this, uh, actually this, it's the same as the solution to the memory problem uh, if in out of memories. Uh, we just use um, things like flat map to delay the recursive call to make sure that this is not called while uh, we are trying to understand what expression we need to return from this. Because by the time you call this, like this is in a lambda, we are not calling this function yet. So uh, that's safe. Uh, IO defer also solves that problem because it's kind of like IO, uh, I don't know, unit, flat map, uh, something like this. Uh, so we also, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Uh, so this is essentially the same idea as here, um, exactly here, like th that's the same thing. Uh, and using this, uh, this operator, um, it kind of builds that kind of composition in inside itself. Like that, that's exactly what it does. Uh, however, better monadic for, well, I guess if we use that for comprehension, that also solves the problem. Like we can, like we are not going to run out of the stack space here because this does have a flat map. Uh, the problem is that we will run out of other memory on the heap uh, if we don't have better monadic 4 and we use this kind of code. And yeah, actually, because we I showed the defer, uh, there's another way that we could do this, which I think would also be safe uh, using fix. So this would be something like IO fix. Uh, okay, that's not a thing, but if we summon defer of IO and we do fix, unit maybe uh, so we can do something like this I think that's the right way um, so this is going to essentially do the same thing as 
here. Uh, you can take a look at the implementation of fix. It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, I don't want to explain this in too much detail, but uh, that's uh, one way that you could do this as well. Uh, so yeah, I hope this was instructive, uh, these two problems and how to solve them. Uh, hopefully you will not run into this in production and you will actually encounter these recursive calls uh, knowing how to deal with them and you will fix this problem before it becomes a problem. So I hope this was interesting. Please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, click on the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.